Welcome to Intercraft channel. You have had few glances on this calculator if you have watched episode 6 of this channel. It gives me the laser settings, the photo settings and interval for engraving. To achieve this, there are few supportive tables. First one is a speed power table according to what we have seen on episode 3, LPI levels table which the parameter values are found according to episode 4. The detail mode table provides complementary information basically for each material detail mode and recommended interval. And the last one, size LPI, which basically calculates for any entry of detail size, what DPI is calculated based on the number of dots for a given size of details. The material are listed under this drop-down list based on the items entered into the supportive tables. There is a script attached to this Google Sheet which orders the list of material. Unless drop-down list will not work. On the LPI level table, there is a column for laser type which is linked to the material. By selecting the material, it reminds you to choose the right laser for engraving in case you have multiple laser engravers. When you are defining different laser types for possibly one type of material, you should add an identifier for yourself and also to make the material item distinctive. Otherwise, your entries will be mixed up. Line intervals drop-down list is fixed, but the users can change the items on the list. Just a minor comment, consider the resolution of your engraver when you are defining these steps. I've explained it on episode 5. When you have already filled in the data for a specific material to the supportive tables, selecting the line interval will give you the proper speed and power for photo engravings. The speed and power is calculated based on the entries on this table by dot burn time approach. You enter two sets of measurements after running the test explained in episode 3. A linear equation is used to calculate the power for the other intervals. It's a simple formula of multiplying A to speed and adding B to have the power for the given speed. The power is calculated for the speed values between or beyond the range of the two entries. This is under the assumption that the dot burn time per pixel is fixed for each material. Matching the speeds are calculated for each interval, then the power is calculated. So what you need to do here is to enter the values into the speed power table and when you choose different intervals it calculates the speed and power for you. The next set of parameters I'm going to explain to you is the enhancement radius and enhancement amount. Enhancement is a feature that helps to sharpen the detail image. On light burn that I use it has two entries radius and amount. I've done many trials and visual evaluations of the detailed images and ended up with the formula for these parameters. You are more than welcome to change them according to your expectations. Unless check often if a new version of this calculator, these cells have been updated. Just a minor reminder, if you have not watched and engraved the test on episode 3, those tests identify the time required per pixel. Just enter one of the, the sets you have found from the test. It calculates the time per pixel. Column A and B are the values from power speed table, which is used to calculate the speed and power. With the assumption that this time per pixel, no matter the size of the dot, is constant for each material. Levels are found according to episode 4, which means adjust the intensity of the dark shades in case overlaps causing overburn of an engraving where the dots and dashes are overlapping each other. In case you are using multiple line intervals for engraving on the same material, choose one low and one high interval and run the tests according to episode 4 and enter those values into this table. Once again, a linear correlation 
is used to calculate the levels for other intervals than the entries on this table. If you are just using one interval for a specific material, leave the third and the fourth column, column K and L blank. If the image is needed to be engraved invert or negative, invert it first, then remove the levels. When we are engraving positive, dots on the detailed image are black and expected to leave a black mark on the material. So to eliminate the overburns due to the overlaps, portion of the levels is removed to produce the dark shades correctly. In case the image is engraved negative, it acts the opposite. The dots remove the top layer on the material and reveals the brighter colors. So the level helps to get the light shades correctly. For a long while I have been investigating to find a way to calculate the right interval and get a good engraving to a large extent. What I've found so far is when we are looking at an image, there is a reasonable size of details that I would like to acquire by an engraving. On the other hand, from the experience, it seems that there is a number of pixels or dots on an engraving which is required to reveal the details. For instance, I have assumed this to be 25 pixels for getting a great engraving job. This is an open parameter, you may lower it or higher it and test what you get. You may change the detail size and it gives you a recommended interval, where you upscale or crop the photo or downscale and engrave with lower interval to reproduce those details. This is an example I show here, a photo of a beautiful golden retriever engraved on plywood in size of 290 times 200 millimeter. So I enter these values as the size of the engraving on the calculator. Since I've done this engraving with uh, 0 0.14, I choose here and it shows details within 3.5 millimeter are possible to visualize. So I change it to, to get the scale as 1. Now let us see how much details is possible to contain in 3.5 millimeter square. Zoom in to the area of interest, draw a square, and size it to 3.5 millimeter. When you are choosing details, try to contain a detail and the gap to the next detail. If I zoom in to the area of interest on the engraving, we can see the chosen details were produced and it was quite eye-catching from a zoom back view. So I was able to get the details contained in 3.5 mm square. What if I wanted to get the details on the nose of the die? In that case, I should have chosen the details to have a dimension of 2.5 mm. The calculator recommends that I should have chosen 0.1 mm as interval, but have it in mind, reducing the interval from 0.14 to 0.1 mm has made the engraving time double. It always makes sense, most specifically for the big projects, to decide to what degree of detail you want to reproduce on an engraving. I've engraved this photo on a 200 times 200 mm canvas a couple of months ago. By then, I was thinking that all photos are needed to be engraved with high DPI. This one was done with 0.08 mm intervals, 318 DPI. Even I made it with three colors, white, gold and black, and when I gave it to a friend of mine as a gift, they loved it. The size of the engraving is 190 times 182 mm on canvas with 0.08 mm line intervals. So let us check the parameters on the calculator. Just a minor reminder, even if you are not using this calculator, set your original photo PPI, pixel per inch, double the DPI of the detailed image you want to engrave.
Get the enhancement parameters and check it on the laser software. Theater mode is Yaris. It can deliver very nice shades of gray and also details of the detailed image. But as you have seen on episode 6 of this channel, to be able to visually evaluate the detailed images, it should have the same dimensions as shown on your screen. On my screen, the width is 122, so I crop this photo to 122 times 70 millimeter and get a piece of it to evaluate. And uh, as you see on this ruler, its actual size matches the size on my screen. So if I change the interval, I can get the right feeling of how the engraving may look like. What I'm doing is trying to increase the interval and find the right point which I feel I get the detail that I wish. I think 0.14mm will do a decent job. I've made a copy of this photo and cropped the same 122 times 70 mm piece of it. But remember, I've adjusted the PPI for 0.14mm in advance, which means 362.857. At this point, it's important to at least set the right PPI because the enhancement shows differently if the PPI doesn't match the calculated enhancement parameters. Remember also to set the correct detail size according to the selected line intervals to have the scale as 1 and get the right enhancement parameters. With these settings for 0.14mm line intervals, I have engraved this photo and if I put it next to the one shown the beginning of this section you don't recognize a big difference. But time is a valuable factor. If I check the engraving time of the file with 0.14 mm line intervals it shows me that it takes almost one third of the time to engrave with 0.08 mm line intervals. We can see the importance of engraving with the right DPI, especially engraving big projects or duplications. You may find the link to the Google Sheet of the photo engraving calculator in the description below. Since I'm sharing this file publicly, no one can edit and write into this file. It's in view-only format. To be able to use it, you may click on the file and then make a copy. Give it a name as you wish, may include the dates of the original file. Then later you can identify if there is a new released version of the calculator. There is a script incorporated with this Google Sheet, which is putting the entries on the table in order, to be assured that the drop-down list of material works. Now you have a version of your own calculator that can interact with and start filling in your materials and the test results into the supportive tables. On the first table, calculator, which is locked except the, the green cells. You may click on the other cells and check the formulas behind. Though the cells are locked, you can change them in case you have found a better formula. I've been wondering if by keeping the line intervals constant and lowering the detail size and recalculating the enhancement parameters, is it possible to reveal more details or not? The calculated values for enhancement parameters are still in beta version, but if I manage to make it to work better, you will see it as a comment in front of this section in another version of this calculator. If a new version of the calculator was released, you should only check its file on your Google Sheet list or check under the Shared with Me option. If the date or time of this file is more recent than the version you already have copied, make another copy as it was explained at the beginning of this section. The only action you need to do is to copy and paste your entries on supportive tables from former version to the new version. Except the grayed out columns, which there are formulas behind. Keep in touch and see you another time.